I was in the Marines, I did a lot of stupid things. And some of those stupid things were just fun stupid things, of course, but some of those stupid things were truly evil stupid things. Volunteering to go to Iraq, uh, guarding detainees in a sleep deprivation situation. Um, and I, I want to point out that in, in the freedom movement in general, we have a lot more than the general population share of veterans that we would have if there were no special circumstance here. And that's part of what I want to talk about, that there are so many of us who are propelled away from government by our experience in the military that we cannot help but become libertarians. And for a lot of us, we go through some difficult phases in not just transitioning to civilian life, but transitioning our paradigm to one of ethics, of freedom, of libertarianism. And in that responsive phase, that reactionary phase, there's a tendency to have a lot of resentment towards the commander-in-chief at the time you were in, to the politicians who sent you overseas, to the commanders who ordered you on missions that never should have happened, to every time you had to see someone die for nothing, for a crime. It's funny, we're hearing recently in light of Donald Trump's missile strikes into Syria that no matter who the American people elect to be president, we still get John McCain. And it is kind of scary in that truth that it is important to recognize and that a lot of people getting out of the military have a lot of grappling to do with, which is the realization that you were a sucker for joining the military. A lot of times people say, thank you for your service. And I, I used to I used to really like take issue with that. I used to actually uh, I let it trigger me a little bit in the sense that how dare you thank me for my service when you know that or at least you should know that I was only serving bankers, politicians and war profiteers. And now if you thank me for your service or if you say thank you to your service to me, I will uh, take the opportunity to make sure you know exactly what you're thanking me for, for having served bankers, politicians, and war profiteers. But I don't, I don't mind it anymore. I don't let it trigger me. I actually gratefully take it now as an opportunity to share a, a more enlightened perspective with someone who probably needs it. But then I've been asked, you know, what, what do you say, Adam, when you, when you meet a veteran? Well, when you're a fellow veteran, you have a little more latitude in what you can say, especially when you were in the Marines, because, you know, it's hard to be humble when you're the best. But I, I like to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for your servitude. And I have never failed to get a laugh out of that from a veteran. And I, and I think a, a civilian even would be pretty safe saying that. And if you think you, if you, if you end up being unsafe as a result of saying that, be glad that you said it and found out that you had someone who was unsafe to be around when their militaristic ego is being challenged and that you found out with a, a relatively mild transgression. But there's something else that has come to me recently, really even just in the last few years, uh, in getting to a state of greater calm and acceptance of what I was a part of and how I was lied to and taken advantage of. And being much more calm about it now allows me to truly appreciate the good things of the military. And I don't want to say an unbiased light because that's probably never going to be possible. But right now as we're getting ready, organizing the March of the Dead Veterans 
to call attention to the issue of veteran suicides on June 30th, the uh, first full day of business of the Libertarian National Convention in New Orleans, marching with masks, uh, skull masks, to call attention to the epidemic of veteran suicides and pledging our support to the LP because it is the only political party that has a real solution to the problem of veteran suicides, namely end the drug war and give the VA to the veterans. Obviously, Republicans and Democrats are all too willing to kill veterans on behalf of the pharmaceutical industry through the VA. That has to end. And it's been a while since I've, I've done any kind of deliberate organizing just to veterans. In fact, I think it was since 2012 with Veterans for Ron Paul. And even then, I, I harbored a lot of this negativity at that point. I think in the Ron Paul days, a lot of us were still in that reactionary phase. Fortunately, people who are waking up today get to go through this much faster, having seen so many of us do it the hard way going before them. But I'm starting to appreciate a little bit more about what it means to be a veteran and appreciate my fellow veterans. And having worked with a lot, especially recently on my team, we have a lot of veterans, certainly more than our share. There are certain things I've, I've really come to not just enjoy being around other veterans with, but really appreciate about who we represent as a demographic in society. And in none of these things do we have a monopoly or a, a perfectly unique advantage, but there is something about joining the military, especially in the Marines. The Marines are extra military, remember that. But uh, especially in the Marines, they teach a lot of teamwork and there's a sort of proactive helpfulness that goes along with that. And, and certainly among the veterans who I know who consider themselves activists, they still have that beautiful attitude of proactive helpfulness. And I think that even motivates a big part of their activism, but also the willingness to sacrifice. And I don't think, I, I mean, I, I, I used to, to like to rant and say that uh, nothing I do as an activist is a sacrifice, but to cheapen my own contribution is to cheapen the contribution of so many others who really do sacrifice. And I still like to maintain that attitude, but I understand that people sacrifice financial opportunities, they sacrifice relationships, uh, they, they sacrifice a, a lot in order to become activists, to commit themselves to the cause. And I think there are a lot of veterans, especially, who have taken on that role in that same spirit in this movement. And so I just wanted to, to share with you all how my, my attitude has changed in, in hopes that, again, you can learn from the mistakes of others so you don't have to make them yourself and perhaps take a more enlightened, loving attitude towards everyone and understand that that is the inevitable conclusion that you come to from meditating on freedom long enough. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions including DTube, and you can find that through steamit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.